Thanksgiving, everybody. I said we'd pick right where we left off. There are a few more terms that we should remember that we've talked about in class. One of them is propinquity, right? Now, propinquity is just the proximity of being close to something. But the term is used to refer to uh, how people tend to choose their, their various mates or their romantic partners, right? Because if you think about it, if you go to STM, you're most likely going to date someone who's also from STM just because your proximity is close. That's the available dating pool for the most part, right? And what we need to understand is that the whole theory, the whole things, we talked about propinquity, right? This is always, this is all about a battle between Humphrey and Wolf Larson, right? And this gets back to Charles Darwin, right? When Charles Darwin wrote his famous book, right? Origin of Species, right? And in it, he posits his very famous theory of how life evolves. It's sometimes called the theory of evolution, but the proper term is it's the theory of natural selection, right? And the idea of natural selection is that certain species are more fit, they're more adaptable to the various uh, things around them in order to be able to survive. And so, therefore, nature selects certain species or certain kinds of things within species to be able to survive and thrive, and some not. Darwin first noticed this when he was studying moths in London, basically because of the really bad air pollution that was going on in the Industrial Revolution in London, he was noticing that the blacker moths, right, uh, they were able to survive more easily because of how the smoke and the pollution was affecting the trees in London. In London, where there was a ton of pollution, moths that were darker could camouflage better against the trees, and therefore there were a lot more of them than there were in other places. In other places in England, Moths were more white because being white, they could blend in with the white bark of those trees, which were not being constantly contaminated by the burning of coal, right? Uh, another uh, example of evolution within species is, is giraffes have super long necks because the longer your neck is, the more food you can reach, the more food you can reach, the easier it is to survive. So over periods of thousands of years, right, giraffes are going to be more standardized to have longer necks because those are the kind that survive. Ultimately, right, the story of the sea wolf is what we call this drama of sexual selection, right, which simply means who is Maud going to pick, but it's also an extension of just the theory of natural selection. Who, as a man, as a human being, is more apt to survive in the long term, right? Basically, this is a debate over which of these two philosophies, these two ways of living, is actually going to be more conducive to surviving in the long term, right? And so the question that ultimately is being asked by London in this book is, is selflessness or selfishness a better survival trait. Right? This is the ultimate question for morality, right? Because as we remember, Jack London is a materialist, right? And if Jack London is a materialist, he's not going to base good and evil in God or in the soul or in eternal reward or punishment. So for him, if he thinks there's going to be any moral truth, it's going to have to happen in the concrete material world. And so to London, right, what is going to be good is going to be what is the most fit, the most survival. So the question of the novel as we go forward in this drama of this love triangle is who is actually more fit? The intellectual but moral Humphrey Van Weyden, who has all of these different principles about altruism and taking care of one's fellow man, or the much physically stronger but completely selfish, even though more intelligent, Wolf Larson. Is Wolf Larson, even though he's more intelligent and more physically fit, he's also a loner. He's a lone wolf, right? That's one of the reasons why they call him a wolf, right? 
is this going to, which one is more adaptable to surviving in the human community in the long term? The other question that Jack London is asking, because as we remember, there's, he's also a socialist, right? And he's talking about capitalism and socialism as well in the, in the novel. He wants to ask, is capitalism, which is definitely embodied by Wolf Larsen, right? Or socialism, and it's weird because you, you wouldn't think that socialism is a thing that Humphrey Van Weyden represents, and in many ways he doesn't because he's a rich guy who's never worked a day in his life. But he is a socialist in the sense that he has empathy for the poor now. While capitalism, right? Capitalism is neither moral or amoral, right? Capitalism is just business. You ever heard that? It's not personal, it's just business. In that way, capitalism is kind of like a predator the way Wolf Larsen is a predator, right? A, a tiger isn't evil to want to look at you and want to eat you, right? So the idea of capitalism and the survival of the fittest and being, right? The question is, is a more empathetic society where we care for the poor and the weak, is it better for long-term human survival than capitalism? Now, granted, right, people may disagree um, about socialism being a representation of altruism, but for Jack London, right, for him, socialism and altruism really are the same thing, right? So really, right, the idea is should society be revolved around just the idea of ruthless capitalism, or should it be based around altruism, the taking care of of other people and the, the communal exercise, right? He's asking not which is better in any moral sense according to religion, because he's not interested in religion. He's not interested in the soul, but he's just interested in long-term benefit of the human being as a surviving species, looking at reasons in the material world, which is better for the long-term survival of mankind, right? So in the end, right, it is hump versus wolf, but it's also about classic philosophy versus Nietzsche. And it's also, you know, it's, it's, it's who's going to survive between the cooperative versus the selfish and who's going to survive in this idea of altruism or empathy to Jack London, that meant socialism versus ruthless individualism versus ruthless capitalism, right? Those are all the themes that we are looking at in the Seawolf. So that's just a reminder of a lot of the main things that are going on in the text and things to keep looking for as we jumpstart back into the text. Please keep looking on your Google assignment sheet for where we are with our reading and what's expected of you from day to day. I know we're going to be starting a full uh, e-learning schedule, I believe starting on the 30th, so it'll be exciting. You'll get videos from me every day, right? I know you're super excited about that. But why don't we just uh, close in prayer and please know that I am anxious and eager to want to see you all in person as soon as humanly possible. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, in this time of illness, even though I wish I were at St. Thomas More able to teach in person, thank you for the gift of video cameras and recorders and the internet so that I can still talk to my students from a distance. Please keep them safe, keep them happy, keep them from going crazy in their quarantine. And Lord, bring us all back safe and sound together. May we all see each other happy, holy, healthy, and not just in heaven, but on earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All right, guys, Jesus loves you, and so do I, and you will be seeing more content from me very, very soon. Don't forget with these videos is going to be just a list of the topics and the ideas that we've covered. And there's going to be a quiz about all of this on Google Classroom. You can watch the videos as many times as you need.